those never ending engineering classes and all those processes. Late night studies, cramming so much information right before the exam. Formulae in Greek, I mean, formulae in Greek, when we're studying English, why the alpha, beta, gamma, omega? Well, the problems for me, the sizes of textbooks. That was enough to discourage us. Diseases named after doctors, they were endless. That kind of discouraged us from trying to win, discover a disease. God help us. So, wait a minute. Uh, why did you do this in the first place? That's a question my mom still asks. <laughs> Whatever, Marshall. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Youth Ministry Podcast Series, Coming Home to the Father's Love. I am really excited for you all to join me on episode four of the series. As you would infer from this title, episode four follows the theme, Faith. However, we are going to try to understand faith from a perspective that not <clears throat> many of us would experience. Before we get into the discussion, though, uh, we shall say a short prayer, and I request Amanda... Uh, to lead us into prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, gracious Abba, loving Daddy, we thank and praise you for this gift of life, of good health, and this time that we have. We ask for your Holy Spirit to enlighten our minds as we deliver the message you want all those people to hear who are honestly seeking for the truth. Reign in our hearts, O Lord, today and always. May all this be accomplished for your greater glory. This we ask in your most holy and precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Amanda, for that lovely prayer. Now, it has never been the intention of science to question the church and its theology, nor has science through all these years made progress with that specific purpose at its helm. However, over the decades and centuries of scientific development and growth, the church and her people have been challenged and questioned by some from the scientific community. Many of those challenged working within that same community. Through this episode, we hope to understand and appreciate the different challenges one faces with their faith by being part of the scientific community. And to speak more on this, I am joined by two of our very own parish youth, Josma and Amanda. So I'm Josma Rodriguez. Um, perhaps some of you know me from my time in Muscat. It's been a long time, actually. Now I'm in Germany. I came here to study environmental engineering. And if it sounds big, it's basically, um, you know, using technology to make things more environmental friendly, like less waste and things like that <laughs> that's about me and i love being in oman and i miss oman and i miss muscat and all the people there so hi guys especially those who were with me during my time in oman <clears throat> hello everyone this is amanda uh dr amanda now i have to get used to this title it's taking quite some time uh, yes, I have been brought up in Muscat and it's been such an instrumental part of our life in Muscat. I don't think we can ever forget it. And a lot of memories related and re regarding that place. Right now, it's been some time since I've been in India, about 10 years or so. And I've done my MBBS here and I'm working currently in the ICU of a hospital in Mumbai. It's been a great journey and I'm so glad I could join you guys in this podcast. Um, so, Josma, getting um, straight off the bat, help us understand what are some of the challenges that one experiences with living their faith by working in the scientific community? Hmm. Well, when you're, like, so to speak, with people who are working on a scientific project or just like something to do with engineering, it's just you're in the minority as someone who believes. So um, the fact that you're in the minority makes it difficult to form like deeper bonds because um, I, I think a common belief is a very good starting point to make friendships because you're not really 
um, in conflict with our the very very basic thoughts that they have. have. So, so that, that's 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 one thing of forming good relationships. relationships. Um, and, and then it's also about like like you cannot express a big part of your life in the scientific world. I mean, anything to do with projects and all of those things is accepted, but when it comes to religion, hey, sorry, do your thing. And, um, you know, we will do our thing. And it's good if you, I mean, we won't stop you from practicing your religion, but keep it private. So um, let's say you have some, sometimes you have these spiritual dryness, you know, you want to discuss certain things. Um, that's not necessarily the place where you can do all of that. So uh, that's certainly a challenge. Um, Amanda, I know you're waiting. Um, <laughs> Amanda, the, the medical field faces a lot of pressure with um, having to answer or to, to, I think the medical field faces more of a challenge when it comes to, to explaining itself. So working in the medical field, um, what are some of the challenges that you have faced with, with living your faith? Thank you for the question, Marshall. I think, uh, yes, uh, to be frank, from the time of conception right up to the end of life, uh, life itself is an eventful journey and we doctors or the healthcare personnel do have our opinions or do have our challenges when it comes to the various aspects that we have to deal with concerning life. Uh, so, of course, our, our faith is sometimes misunderstood or we have a lot of questions or we don't have answers. I think that's what I'm getting to, uh, to say. Uh, when it comes to life, at the end of life, how much can we do as doctors? How much can we try to save the patient when there is no quality of life that can happen afterwards? These are places where I've had conflicts as to when do I let a patient go or whether I can just continue giving my treatment and they don't get better. This is one aspect of uh, a challenge that I've faced regarding my faith. Then there's also ethics that comes to play regarding the ventilatory support. Now I work in the ICU, so ventilators are a common thing for me. And we do see patients on ventilators for long. And then we don't know how long can we keep them like this when their quality of life is poor. Then when there is a conflict uh, among doctors or colleagues itself, where our social views or religious views or even physical views regarding a particular subject are different and we have to obey nonetheless, this also poses like a challenge. When all we want to do is the best for the patient and sometimes it is taken in the best interests of the doctor or the consultant concerned. These are the many challenges that I think we face as doctors in the medical field. Amanda, there was, an, there was one particular thing which you said, which um, I'm guilty of and I resonate with. Um, it's about having answers. Um, that's something very relevant. And now we've had a, a, lit, a letter, I'd call it a letter, written to us by one of our parishioners who's in the seminary. Um, many of you would know him, Kevin Palakrin. I hope I've pronounced his name correct. Um, so okay, Kevin has been very, very, very um, nice to, to write us a little letter. And he has a point which very much resonates with, with this whole idea of having, of, of science having to answer and faith and religion having um, to answer a lot of questions and, and justify itself. So I'll just read a little extract, uh, which goes something like this. Faith and science shouldn't and cannot contradict. However, doubts in the faith do arise because of a wrong understanding of science. People often wrongly assume that everything should be provable by science. That is, mm -hmm. science alone is the only reliable way to secure knowledge of anything. Or that science is the only form of reasoning. Even religious people fall into this trap and assume they ought to prove the existence of God using science. So the, the, the challenge, these two challenges which you've both spoken about, so very true, uh, very, very daunting and very, very testing of your faith. But the beauty about challenges, uh, which I personally see, is the fact that they present an opportunity. And one of the opportunities which, 
which I personally see is uh, for 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 this challenge, is that it gives us the opportunity to strengthen our faith to come back to God. Um, so, Josma, um, can you walk us through how you've used these challenges that you've experienced um, in ways to strengthen your faith and your relationship with God? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, initially when I came about five, four, four, four to five years back, I had this, um, you know, recent conversion moment, the love of the Lord and um, things that was cute, it was sweet. And um, I came to Germany expecting the same thing. And lo and behold, when I went to church, there were no young people. Um, that was a huge shock. And uh, initially it shook me. Um, you know, I didn't know what to do about it. Um, I had no family, no friends there because it was just the start of um, my studying phase. So really the only, only source was the Lord. And um, this personal time with the Lord every morning where I was just like, Lord, I do not understand this. I feel so lonely. I don't have the answers. What am I going to do? And um, there wasn't any big concrete um, wonderful vision or whatever but i i did notice that i did feel the sense of someone accompanying me and guiding me um yeah i i also remember in classes i've had people from different denominations or you know even atheists they come up with questions up front you know without caring for what exactly you believe like why do you even believe in that um for example, sometimes I've had questions like, why Mary? Why this? Why that? And honestly, I just had my conversion moment, right? I didn't have all these theological answers to all these questions. So I remember like sitting sometimes after my uh, engineering classes, like going on YouTube, like, why do we pray the rosary? Or why do we have um, statues in the church? Or why do we think Jesus is God? And I wasn't really hoping to find very many great answers. But honestly speaking, from some of the resources, I was able to understand that and then explain that to some extent to people. Um, that showed me one thing. Um, it's okay to be scared. It's okay to be in the dark. It's okay sometimes to not feel God, by the way. But to really be curious and continue on the journey and regardless of the external circumstances, I mean, it takes great strength to do that, but, but, and, and the Lord provide that strength. Um, yeah. So just to summarize, like I would say, um, this personal time with the Lord and sometimes going for mass, what I didn't understand before, it was like spiritual pizza. I mean, like I really felt so full and happy after coming back. So I actually completely agree with what Kevin says. Um, the, there was this time when I was watching debates on um, YouTube, by the way, debates, watching debates is a, is nice if you have questions about the faith. Um, and, and this one thing became clear to me that, yeah, sure, science is about measurement, science is about results, and that really feeds our um, brain, you know, we can see something like, I don't know, you have diabetes because the sugar level is like this or whatever. Um, but um, yeah, sure, that belongs to science and that's good, but not everything that is in this universe can be measured. And just because something cannot be measured does not mean it doesn't exist. So it, it just means it goes beyond the realm of science. And then to come back only to science to seek answers to these questions would be, would be false. And I've read somewhere like, you can't necessarily always measure something like a mother's love or, um, you know, things like that. Maybe it sounds a little corny, uh, but, but that, that really is the truth. Um, there are some things that just exist. That doesn't mean you don't use your brains to understand it, but it's not just limited to that. Dr. Manda, what about you? How have you navigated through the medical field and its um, challenges to strengthen your faith? Mm, well, I think... Uh, the fragility of life couldn't be explained more when I joined the ICU for my work. Uh, death comes pretty fast in certain situations and sometimes you are not prepared. 
and nobody ever is as doctors as mediators of health i think we primarily want our patients to leave the icu in a better condition but there are situations and circumstances which we cannot avoid and we are not in control of so looking at those moments where i have seen patients uh, have unexpected outcomes where probably even the consultant has thought maybe there's not much of uh, there's not, not much improvement going to be in a particular case and that patient has recovered substantially enough to leave the icu those are moments that have really helped my faith grow helped substantiate my faith then as as jos as josma shared i think uh, yes we do tend to go to the internet and youtube as millennials you know nothing is easy nowadays <laughs> reading books was never my forte and even my medical books were out of question i think that's why <laughs> i'm still here but i think uh, watching youtube videos really helped especially when you feel dry in your faith when you have uh, things to fall back on when you have father mike and his videos to keep you going i think i realized <laughs> how much my faith grew when i was physically alone when i had to be that doctor making decisions and prescribing medicines i was terrified and i remember when we were being taken by bus when i was studying in my college for, you know to a primary health center where i would be the only doctor i remember praying the divine mercy holding on to the divine mercy because i didn't know what patient i would encounter what problems they would have that i would be able to diagnose and i realized that strength can only come from somebody divine and uh, as josma said i think i've had a pretty similar experience when it comes to standing up for your faith where these questions are answered when you are have your personal journey in faith i don't think faith is inherited it has to be acquired it is a personal journey mm-hmm. and everyone's journey is different so these were many quite a few of the many things that helped me grow in faith and turn back to god especially when i needed it so it's okay to feel dry it's okay to not experience god as she said i think mother teresa herself had so many years where she did not experience god uh, or ac- experience his presence tangible presence but she went on she didn't give up i don't think we should either josman amanda you know listening to what both of you said it just just made me realize that i'm living in muscat at least i i take for granted the comfort of the right environment and the community that i have josma i'm so sure that having moved to germany you've realized this on a much larger scale um that it's so much easier to reinforce your belief or even practice your faith when there are people with the same mindset that you get to interact with on a regular you know on a regular basis so having that right environment does play a big factor does it not for sure i mean if you take for as an example for anything a brain surgeon would love to discuss about the brain with other brain surgeons um and environmental activists would write like to you know talk about the environment with other people cuz they are on that same page and they know the basics they don't have a, a you know like do you even believe that i don't know that the environment is getting degraded or something so that's already it doesn't lead to anything it's the same with the faith it's no different i remember like after like in the first two years when i came back to oman to visit family i remember telling the mipc youth still like you guys i mean i miss you all what you have together is so amazing because this is something that i don't have back there in germany um as for, since then there have been like some youth groups but um i would still say yeah 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 we need each other because christianity it's not just about your own faith it's about a communal life it's about loving each other it's about helping each other grow in this beauty of what we know as a christian faith josma amanda for the budding teens and the youth who are moving uh, into this particular field any tips or any pointers any references any go to bible references that you would like to share so i think i've already um, mentioned this previously um when you have questions regarding the faith like why do we do certain things why do we follow this why why the mass why this why confession um i would recommend um catholic answers on youtube you find their own website as well um they're an american organization and they're into apologetics apologetics is basically defending the faith um 
yeah, that's a good source. There's also Bishop Barron for those who are like, I don't know, he speaks a little bit about philosophy, language, and combines that with um, the faith. That's also a good source. Then there's Father Mike Schmitz. Um, for those who also want, yeah, Amanda mentioned that as well, for those, you know, um, who want the spiritual faith, but also with that fatherly love, um, that's to do with, you know, questions regarding the faith. But if, I would also say, like, if you're feeling just this thing of, I don't sense God, or I need help with understanding how to even start a conversation with him. What does that even look like? How can I make Jesus my friend or um, things like that? I would just say, first of all, don't be afraid of those questions and that darkness. It's okay. It's normal. In fact, if you don't have it, that would be weird. Um, and then just reach out to someone. Don't feel embarrassed. I mean, maybe you're known in church as the Christian, but you don't even know if that's what you believe. It's okay. Talk about it with somebody. Choose someone, choose a priest, a Christian elder, and allow those um, conversations to happen. Re responding to your uh, question about what's the one go-to prayer, there is this um, verse in Isaiah 49, chapter... Isaiah 49, verse 15. And it says, Can a mother forget the child of her womb but even should a mother forget I will not forget you and for me during those times when I just felt so low so insecure you know just wanting this acceptance of community of friends of family of whoever you know um, this was a good reminder that I'm not forgotten I'm precious I am loved because that that's at the base of all that we do we want love we want acceptance and when we don't find it it can really tear our world apart and then to say hey the god who made you experienced his love so yeah he doesn't forget us he doesn't forget you <laughs> truly Josh, i agree with a lot of points that you have stated it's always good to go to someone i think that's my natural lazy tendency to before you know going to the books and reading up stuff and probably even going on youtube i always have this desire to ask my friends who are closest to me who are very well, uh, I mean, quite well in the faith, who are like-minded and have a deeper knowledge of the Bible also sometimes that I go and question and probably have a healthy discussion with. Um, so it's always good to go to an elder or a priest and that really helps. And we have Father Mike and as Joseph mentioned, other sources. I'm pretty sure even on Insta, Instagram, we have a few pages that we could follow. A lot of answers we do get, you know, from these pages and anything that comes across even sometimes when we have difficult situations a bible verse just freshens our faith you know just perks our faith right up to whatever it can be so verses have helped you know everyday reflections sometimes have helped me i think for the youth it's also good to look back at uh, the UCAT, which has questions and answers regarding our faith it's a concise size version of the catechism of the catholic church so it's good to not not to ask questions, questions as well. Just as it is okay, okay to not know. No. Just because, because we don't have an answer to something, something as just right, like we point out, that doesn't mean that it exists. I think there, there is a very, very valid philosophical question that science still can't answer today. Like, why is there something instead of nothing? I don't think science has an answer to this question. That must be the most primary concern of everyone. So it's all right, you know, I truly believe that science is a gift of gift given to us by God to help understand nature and how things work. So these are the many mediums I think that we could follow as youth, as teens. Also, personal prayer helps and Bible has the answers to a lot of things. I have to agree on that as Josma pointed it out. Uh, my personal verse that always keeps me going is Jeremiah 29, 11, which speaks about God's plans for our prosperity for our welfare, not for our destruction, even in the current situation that we're all facing in lockdown and the COVID pandemic where we do not see answers, we don't have a vaccine yet, we don't know how equipped we are, and as doctors, we still aren't prepared. We're going into this blind, hoping that, you know, God takes care of everything. My Bible verse when it comes to, uh, I think, faith and reason, I, uh, I look upon, I think, Hebrews 11, 1, which speaks about, uh, faith is the assurance of things hoped for 
and conviction of things not seen. So even if we don't see and if we believe, blessed are we. That's my take. And I hope that will help you too. So Kevin suggested a couple of um, Catholic scientists that we can look up to and learn from. Some of them are very surprising. So he suggests reading about Pope Sylvester II, Saint Albert the Great, uh, Gregor Mendel and Blaise Pascal. Um, these people were not afraid of being deep in faith and studying science since they believed that faith and science cannot contradict each other. So some really nice, uh, good references from, from Kevin. And Kevin's also... And just to add to that, I mean, the, the scientist who actually came up, what we know as the Big Bang Theory now, was actually proposed by a Belgian priest. And it was named as the Big Bang by other scientists who were trying to mock it, like, oh, the Big Bang happened. But now we take it for granted, you know. Um, and just to tell that, that's a contribution as well. <laughs> I was not aware about that. Oh, <laughs> you learn every day, don't you? <laughs> um, Jasma and Amanda, thank you so much for joining me and our viewers on this podcast today. And Kevin, thank you so much for writing, um, writing to us and sharing your views on the topic. I'm so sure that so many of us, um, that for so many of us, your experiences and perspectives have been nothing short of an eye opener. And that for the youth and teens who are currently experiencing this or have gone through a similar experience, this is a realization that they are not alone and can always look to God for strength and guidance to come back home. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of this podcast episode. If you are here for the first time, please like, share and subscribe to the Youth Ministry YouTube page so that you do not miss out on all the fun and interesting things that the youth are up to. Also, please go check out uh, Josma's YouTube page, which she will inform us more about right now. So I have a YouTube channel. Um, I love singing. I love music. And I want to use the beauty of music to allow the soul to experience the father's love. Like I experienced it many years ago. So I write my own songs and I upload it um, once a week so far. They're in English and in German. So if you're curious about how German sounds like in a song, feel free to drop by. And then perhaps like, comment and subscribe. That would really, really make my day. So folks, if you have any comments or questions or topics you would want us to discuss in the future podcast, please write them down in the comment section below. Once you are done watching this podcast, we encourage you to watch the other podcasts if you haven't already, as well as the other videos put up by the youth on this channel. I keep you all in my prayers and hope you keep me in yours as well. Um, stay safe, stay blessed on your personal journeys as you come home to the Father's love. Until next time.